tell, I'll tell you, Lionel's books, there's never any sex and the laughs are very dry. I've always admired and respected his books, but this time I actually enjoyed it. There was a vitality there. Oh, you just made my decade. Yeah, right. Well, hey, how's your latest tome coming along? It's great. I may even finish it today. Huh. Oh, really? Well, I guess you'll be going then. Kicked off his thick soled shoes and show. No, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> Donnie Blitzer shed his leather motorcycle jacket, the kind all the non conformists were wearing, and flopped it down on the sofa. He scooped up two novels. <laughs> so, Patrick. So, Jackie. So what are you doing with an old broad like me, huh? I mean, how come you don't have a girlfriend from like school or work or something? Oh, it's not like I'm a misanthrope or something. I mean, I like most people. It's just there's very few with whom I feel connected. But I always felt that connection with you. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really. I felt it from the moment I first picked up one of your books. After two pages, after two paragraphs even. Now, well, now I feel it all over. In my brain, in my gut, my magic Johnson. Sizing up and pinning down the botanist's talent for identification and classification. But she couldn't pin him down. By the three in the night, the general Ah. Still, she knew she would take him home. There's something about me you should oh, know, cut, he cut. said. Is someone upstairs? No. It's just, um, you know, I had a moment of clarity tonight in that sea of youthful humanity, and I realized that, you know, maybe this whole thing isn't uh, such a good idea. You're gonna let a couple of ditzy titsies run your life? No, it's not just that. I mean, your gal pal was stupid enough to say something. Everyone else is just thinking. Who cares? I care. I'm gonna be 40 in a couple of days. So what? So? I mean, someday I might have to meet your mother. My problem. Or your father. His problem. I just I, I just think we should uh, stop this before we become too... Uh, embroiled. Embroiled. Right? Listen, if... No. So that's it? No, you know, you know, we could be friends. Friends? The fact of the matter is that bitterness and revenge don't inspire anything of worth. I've been uh, paralyzed Whoa. for over a year, blocked, you know. The book is non-existent, a complete Holy body. Holy shit! My husband hogs a remote. This way I can control it. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Jackie York. Hey there. I uh, got my invitation here. As you know, I was invited here this evening to read from my new novel. Now, if you happen to see the interview on television tonight, you might think that I don't actually have one to read from. But I do. It is the beginning of a work in progress. 
and I would like to share it with you. Henry ran himself a bath and padded naked to the kitchen to get the toaster. Henry was depressed, depressed and in love. The girl couldn't have been more than 19. She sold freshly squeezed juice in the labyrinth below the skyscraper where Henry had his law office. Excuse me. Yeah? Excuse me. All day long she stood in a giant fiberglass orange underneath the ground. Henry would descend twice, sometimes thrice a day, and they would chat while she prepared his drink. Truth be told, all that citrus was killing his bladder, but it was worth it. Her eyes were big and sad. She wore a silver ring on her thumb and an expression that said, I know something you don't. He knew that if he asked, she would probably go out with him. Stop it, he thought. It's ridiculous, embarrassing. He surveyed his bald spot. He thought about his 42 years and about how his friends would laugh and whisper if he started dating the girl from the orange. He plugged the toaster into the socket and stepped into the bath. But as he watched the elements heat up and glow orange, he was overcome with the desire to see her one more time. He stepped out of the bath, carried the toaster back to the kitchen, and made himself an English muffin. Ridiculous, he said between bites, embarrassing. But Henry was mistaken. Because love may be many things. Torturous, mad, blinding, even misguided. But it's a pure thing, like art, like music, it connects us, brings us closer to the meaning of it all, closer to God, and it is never ridiculous, never embarrassing. Thank you.